this is, this is, this is. What the fuck is So welcome to my den. I got paid and got a show, but I'm a rider to the end. Got an extender. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to my den. Yes, this is AJ. Um, Today is the topic of all topics. Today, I want to say happy Friday. I'm going to have to wind up and find someone that I can interview and talk and we can debate on this because um, I'm just doing it on my own and I don't have anyone to come along and, and debate. Go against me. That's what I'm saying. You agree or disagree. Have somebody else on here with their other, with their opinion. You know, say what they want to say and feel what they want to feel. You know, I had to bring somebody on here one day. I had to interview someone. But hi, everybody. How are you? Hi, <laughs> this is AJ. This is Arden. Welcome, welcome. Well, I'm going to talk about how these presidents use the war on drugs against people of color. Now, I do not condone at all people selling drugs. I will not say, no, I'm not going to say that. You should just sell drugs. Oh, nope, nope, not going to do that. Not, I disagree with you selling drugs, especially to your people. I have a problem with that. But we're going to go from the beginning to the end. Now, the, the day I'm talking about President Clinton and President Nixon. Now, they use this war on drugs to actually target and have the cops target us, people of color. Not only just African Americans, I'm talking about Hispanics as well, who are of color, Asians who are of color. These these people use that, these presidents use that to um, target African Americans. And how they got in the, um, in the seat of president is because of African Americans, especially Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton would never have reached that seat if it wasn't for African American voters or people of color. We allowed this man to get in um, office and guess what? Turned against us like we wasn't nothing. And this is what I'm saying about now. I'm so skeptical about Hillary that it's like we, I mean, yeah, you did good somewhat, um, Bill Clinton, for the nation. But you did bad for us. You really target us. And I just want people to know this, by starting at the beginning, let let me just go at the beginning. People of color do not own boats. People of color didn't even start this this thing of selling drugs. We didn't start that. You know what I'm saying? We don't own guns. We own guns, but we don't own boatloads of guns. We don't own boatloads of coke. We don't own boats load of meth. We don't own all that. It comes in our neighborhood, so it it's it's a trickle down situation. Um, people tend to try to blame us. And again, people, I'm not supporting drugs. I'm saying don't just target us. Your people, you Caucasian white supremacists. You are the one that bring in this stuff in our neighborhood and then these idiots sell it to their own people. Just totally idiots because you don't want to get a job or something like that. See, they can sit up here. I know I'm from Florida. I have seen um, so many raids out here, out in Florida that they say, oh, yeah. We're going to stop these drugs from coming in. And somehow they continue to come in. Why? It's because most of these drugs are coming from Caucasians that own own boatloads. That own 
Everything you can think of. Boats, planes. We don't own none of that. See? So, when they just come at us and put a policy out and just come at us, you need to come at your own people, honey. You need to sweep in front of your door before you sweep in front of ours. Because guess what? You're going to find a meth lab somewhere around in your neighborhood. You're going to find a drug dealer who's Caucasian. See, they broadcast that we are drug dealers or thugs, but they don't want to go and go really in their closet and dig. And they might find a Caucasian sitting there doing the, selling the drugs or sitting on the side and say, Yeah, you go, you African American. You sell my drugs. I'm the big man. I'm going to sit on top and I'm just going to have you to sell it. Because that's what. They they think or that's what they assume you are. They don't know. I'm sitting up here in a three piece suit, sitting back and letting you sell my drugs. Get what I'm saying? They do it all the time. White supremacists, white Caucasians, they who's high up there and then I high in that I in that level plane. They continue to sit up there and dictate. So they don't want to go after them, the small man they want. They they don't want to go after the big man. Because they know when they start pulling the big man, most of those people are Caucasian. Who bring it in. Wait, you know what? You know, I'm a, you know how I do, right? I'm taking you to school. So when they get there and they say, Oh, you African Americans, you in, you in, y'all don't want to do nothing, y'all sorry, y'all lazy, y'all don't want to work. Let's go back. I recall that you went over there to Africa and got my ancestors and brought them back over here so they can do do your job. Same way what they have people doing now. Selling their drugs. We going to get so deep into this today. That. Yeah you going to think you at school. Because. I'm going to read. Let me let me go over here. Get my computer. And read some of the articles. About Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. Top advisor. Um who actually um, was a key figure in the Watergate scandal, he was talking and he said, this is what he said. He said that, that the war on drugs was created as a political tool to fight blacks and hippies. According to a 22-year-old interview recently published now why i had to wait 22 years why because they didn't want to know that richard nixon would target african americans and hippies the nixon campaign in 1968 the nixon white nixon white house after the that had two enemies the anti-war, that's the hippie, because everybody know the hippies didn't want them to fight, um, go over there and fight. And the black people, they say. So they decide to put out a policy that would target, target African Americans. This is crazy, people. Like I said yesterday, you weren't about somebody's sexual preference. But we have so much to worry about. We have so much to fight against. These people are going against us every day. And we're the people are worrying about somebody's preference or what they're doing behind closed doors. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? You worry about what I'm doing or what someone else is doing. And we have presidents that are getting in that White House because Obama is almost out of here. 
So we don't know who who we are going to get. If we get Trump, we're, we're screwed. If we get Hillary, we're screwed. So what we supposed to do? We supposed to fight people. We supposed to fight them with their own laws. So I I would go on with this about Bill Clinton. Now this is interesting. Because I know I want people to understand about Hillary Clinton. This is what we're going to have to expect when she get into office. Because remember, Bill Clinton and her are still married. It says, under Bill Clinton, the war on drugs is impossible to dispute. The total prison population, listen people, rose by 673,000 people under Clinton. By 235,000 more than it did under President Ronald Reagan. And I didn't care too much about President Ronald Reagan at all. Not at all. It says, according to a study by the Justice Policy Institute, under President Bill Clinton, the number of prisoners under federal jurisdiction doubled and grew more than it did under the previous 12 years of Republican rule. Do you not hear me? Do what? Hold on. News. This is news, honey. It's in there. You can Google it. It rose. It rose. No Republican in 12 years. Because of Bill Clinton putting a war on drugs. That gave an excuse for cops Caucasian cops to pull over African Americans. It says the federal incarceration rate in 1999, the last year a Democrat turn, was 42 per uh, 100,000 more than double the federal incarceration rate. At the end of the President of Reagan turn, 17 per, 17 per, do you understand what I'm saying? 100,000 and 61% higher than, than at the end of President George Bush turn. 25 per 100,000 according to JPI. That means Bill Clinton put more African Americans, people of color, in prison than any other Republican ruling. And I never liked neither one, not President Reagan and President Bush, because all they care about is one percenter, because they are one percenters. But this shows how they tried to put in policies war on drugs to go after people of color. It's plain black and white. Google it, people. I told you, they put it in books, they put it on the internet, because they know you might not read it. Learn how to pick up something and read. I wanted to read something from my book, one of these books that I request you to understand. Tragedy of Hope, the history of the world and our time. Please go and get this book. Um, I was reading this right here. It was pretty interesting. I had to underline it. Um, it says, the challenge of newer ideas with it past nature. The civilization grows steadily, steadily 
week. This was uh, ad, al, alidolatry. Oh, I always have a problem with that word. Alidology. That um, in this book is talking about how civil, civilization began and how a lot of Caucasian, how they want to conquer the world. And how they took over the world. By doing the things that they wanted to do. And they did it. They took over the world because they wanted people to be like them. So they went in there and they socially conditioned these people. And that's my ancestor, our ancestors, anybody who was not a European or Spaniard. You understand? Civ the civilization ability to defend itself against external enemies. This is in this book, people. It's called Culturally Evolution and Civilization. It's a great book. I'm telling you. It's a great book. It's a thick book. I'm not even going to lie. It's, it's a thick book. I think I paid um, about $40. And, and, and the funny thing about this, because I'm talking about the Clintons, and I'm and all this boy into how they're putting war on drugs because this is how they separate us. And how they're gonna come at us so they can keep their power. And it's funny, on Tragedy of Hope, it's on the back of the um, uh, book, they have Bill Clinton as broad day picture, just there. And it said, I heard that call clarified by a professor and this is what he's talking about the person who actually wrote this book the power of finance capitalism had a farther reaching plan nothing less than to create a world system of financial financial control and private hands able to dominate the political system of each country and the economic of the world as a whole hmm interesting i want you people to read this book it's it's awesome i'm still reading it it's a, like i said it's a thick book and i'm always busy so i'll try to get into it and read it um I know I read the Grand Chessboard like I asked you to and Manifest Destiny. I read that as well. But this one I'm taking my time to read because it's getting in, in depth about a lot of things going on and how they be, they um, gain their power. They, and when I say they, the Europeans, how they came over here and they gained their power. They took it. They did not borrow it. They stole it. Andrew Jackson is the worst president that we could have ever had. That he did not see nothing but I am going to take this land. I am I am superior over you. And I am a I am a Caucasian and you can't tell me what to do because of my privileges. The worst president that we ever had to do the things what they what they did to Native Americans, and not only Native Americans, they did it to African Americans. So today, I again ask a question: Where do these drugs come from? Because most African American or people of color do not own the boats, the planes, or the trains. Because I recall the steel, the train was Kaneki and was invested. That's a Caucasian. Um, Vanderbilt was invested in a lot. And um, what was the other one? A Rockefeller was invested in that, all that. Three um, Caucasian guys. Richest family out here. And um, they invested in this. So, the main thing is 
They put war on drugs to use to con- uh, gather us up and put us in a one facility that lock us up like animals like they did in slavery. If you do not see that as a prison, prison system is almost like slavery, then you are sadly mistaken and you need help. It's a lot of laws out here. And you can look it up. How about FEMA? Ugh, I'll go in that later. It's it's just I, I think about a lot of stuff that is actually going on. How they say we are just here to protect you. And knowing during well that they are not here to protect us. They are here to put us in prison. And lock us up. Just like we're animals like they think we are like they see how they want to say that we're animals they have said it hell they got it in the constitution we're three-fifths of a person they don't even consider us a whole person (laughs) they consider us three-fifths we are the only race out here that's in that constitution And you're worrying about other things besides helping our people. You are silly by means. You are so silly to worry about what's going on in somebody's bedroom that we have a war out here to fight. We need to fight these people because they are using war on drugs to gather us up and put us in prison. They will want our vote. They think they deserve our votes because that white privilege. And they are not going to do nothing but go in that White House and help their people. Stop thinking that somebody is going to do something for you. We need to unite people. And every time I get on here, I'm going to continue to say that. We need to unite. Stop sitting on your ass and thinking it's okay. It is not okay, people. We need to unite. We need to get it together and say, hey. It's time to unite because I am sad. I am sick and tired. I am tired of this bull crap that is going on. We sit on our ass and allow these people to use a policy against us who we voted in. We voted these people in. We voted these people in, people. If they don't do a good job, get them out. We may have to suffer for four years, but the next four years they got to go. Our votes count. Just like with that young lady say, oh, my vote don't count. My vote don't count. Your vote do count. Stop. Stop it. Let's lift our head high, walk as kings and queens, and go out there and do right. And unite. Say, I love you, my brother or sister. I want us to grab each other's hands and say, we are not taking it no more. We are not taking it no more. We are not going to take it anymore. We are not animals. We are human beings just like you, Caucasians. If you don't want to walk aside of me, I'm not walking behind you. I don't want you to walk in front of me, and I am not going to walk in front of you. You're going to walk on on the side of me. If you cannot walk on the side of me, you are my enemy. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are my enemy. That mean, and that being said, 
we need to unite and fight everything what's going against us. We need to get out of that abyss and start looking at the light and saying, I am someone. I am a king. I am a queen. I am going to get my education so I can better myself and my people. Because we need to stop these people putting in policy to come at us. Not only that, we need, most of us need to go and get a job instead of selling these drugs for these Caucasians who sitting on high horse and not serving a time. Even if they, even if they catch them doing something. They will get a slap on the wrist, but you'll get about 10 or 15 years. And you don't think that's, you think that's okay? It's not okay. Ugh. Come on. Wake up. Wake up, my people. I'll tell you again. Get out of that abyss. Come to the light. Unite. And we will be okay. Because once we unite, we will. We are not the majority. We are not the minority. We are the majority. If Asians, Hispanics, and African Americans unite, it'll be an awesome thing. I'm telling you. Stop worrying about unnecessary things. Because these white people are not worrying about unnecessary things. They're worrying about getting your black ass in the prison. They're worrying about putting you in prison. And don't make it easy for them. Because simply, you're making it easy. That's my song, and I'm sticking with it. Like I always say, y'all know what I always say. It may smell like coffee, look like coffee. Nope. It may look like coffee, but it doesn't mean it smells like coffee. You know what I'm talking about? So, everybody, you have a great day. In the neighborhood. Don Trip, everybody. I know a lot of people might not be from where we from. The following may not be my true story, but it's still a true story. Damn! Shout it, sell it, everything in the house, flash green Xbox shit, even pots and pans. Toast the oven, microwave, DVD, chilling clothes, even food stamps. Just get a crown. Even pun a baby bike, power wheel, infamil shit. She'll sell anything she can.